like to express God is naturally within us when we begin to unlearn those emotional states that drive us to our lowest denominator. And we begin to reinvent a new self and recondition a new self. We go from being selfish to being selfless. Welcome, blessed viewers, to this week's edition of Science and Spirituality, the first in a two-part series featuring excerpts of interviews with respected scientists regarding how our brain is connected to spirituality and self-transformation. The brain contains a massive and complex neural network with approximately 100 billion nerve cells. It monitors and regulates key body functions such as breathing and heart rate, receives sensory information, manages physical motion like walking and talking, and is involved in reasoning and dreaming. The major parts of the brain are the hindbrain, which has the cerebellum and brainstem, the midbrain, and the forebrain, which has the diencephalon and the cerebrum. During much of the modern era, mainstream science has avoided focusing on spirituality in neurological research. However, in recent years, there have been an increasing number of studies regarding how the human brain functions and reacts during meditation, prayer, near-death experiences, and when one is engaged in focused, constructive thinking. In the study, they did these spec scans with Buddhist meditators and Franciscan nuns, and that shows what parts of the brain get blood flow. And when these Buddhist monks kind of were at their most heightened state of awareness. They pushed a button, they took a picture of the blood flow of the brain. And same with the nuns. And what happened, parts of the frontal lobe became very active, parts of the parietal lobe became very active, and then the right parietal lobe shut down. Mm -hmm. So it got less blood flow. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, uh, nuns in a reverie of prayer, or Buddhist monks in meditation, the part of the brain that turns on is called the frontal lobe. and that that is like the volume control of the brain. When the frontal lobe begins to work properly, it quiets down all the other circuits in the brain so nothing else is being processed but a single mind of thought. And all of a sudden they started to experience altruistic states of compassion and joy and inspiration and goodwill. Brain structures like the amygdala, the orbital frontal cortex uh, at the front of the brain are also involved in various aspects of spiritual uh, experiences in state. Many studies have examined the connection between faith and healing. Dr. Larry Dossey, a physician from the United States and former executive editor of the peer-reviewed journal Alternative Therapies in Health and Medicine, has said that prayer is as effective as penicillin in curing people, but without the side effects. Spiritual concentration and religious conviction can change brain activity and boost the body's immune system, which can lead to spontaneous remission of a disease or the complete healing of an illness. In general, it's been shown that people who are more religious are healthier. As a clinician, all the years I've practiced and most, most health professionals will tell you this, there is clearly something about religion and spiritual experience that helps people cope and basically will we'll make it easier for them to deal with their conditions and to get better or as much as they can. When we produce coherent patterns in the brain, synchronized coherent patterns, the immune system gets very strong. These monks didn't get sick because their system was so integrated and so orderly that disease couldn't live in their body. The signal that's traveling down the central nervous system is creating amazing order that allows the body be, to begin to function in, in, uh, in wonderful ways. We know that the brain is connected to all the other physiological systems in the body, like the immune system, the endocrine system. So it, this means that when you change something at the mind level, for instance a belief, you will influence not only the brain, but all the other physiological systems connected, for instance the immune system. Obsessive compulsive disorder can be reversed through mind exercises and purposefully shifting the focus of one's attention to physically change the way the brain functions. In the bottom of the front of the brain, right above the eye sockets, a part of the brain called the orbitofrontal cortex, and this is basically, among other things, an error detection circuitry in the brain, and it's overactive. So we were seeing that people who had obsessive compulsive disorder had an overactive error detection circuitry, but they realized that 
the, the way they were thinking and feeling didn't make sense. Uh -huh. So this enabled me to say, well, the reason why you're feeling like everything is wrong is because your brain is sending you a false message. Right. Getting people to change their perspective, change their quality of attention, use the impartial spectator, useful awareness mm -hmm. to help them understand that this is their brain sending them a false message. And then when they understand that it's their brain sending a false message, they right. can change the perspective they take on. When science and spirituality returns, we will continue to examine the brain's role in spirituality and affecting self-transformation. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality featuring distinguished scientists speaking about how the brain is interrelated with spirituality and can be remapped to significantly change our physical and mental state. We've done a study also with people suffering from arachnophobia, spidophobia, and um, before starting the therapy, uh, the patients were not even able to look at colored pictures of, sp of spiders in a booklet. At the end of the therapy, uh, and we use cognitive reframing, which is you, you change your belief systems uh, with regard to the phobogenic um, stimulus, the, the, the spiders, for instance, uh, then at the end, all of our patients were able to hold in their hands a giant tarantula. And we scanned them twice, before and after therapy. While we scanned them, we were showing them uh, film clips of spiders in motion. At first, they've all had experienced a panic attack, but at the end of the therapy, which lasted only four weeks, um, there was no uh, reaction in the emotional portion of the brain. There are cases of uh, uh, remission of cancer uh, that are seen uh, when people use uh, visualization, mental imagery, meditation, uh, various relaxation techniques. The informational processes at the mind level for instance, a thought can um, influence uh, brain activity. As you think, so shall you become, is a famous aphorism that reflects the power of the mind to shape who we are as a person, with thoughts directly reshaping how the brain functions. If we focus on a single goal, our lives can be fundamentally changed. The thought, how you think, is the electrical charge in the quantum field. And how you feel is the magnetic charge you emanate. So how you think and feel creates an electromagnetic field that affects every single atom in your life. In the movie What the Bleep, what I was saying most importantly was that if I'm going to sit down and take the time to emulate the creator, if I'm going to be like God, if I'm going to emulate the quantum field which gives life to all things, if I am going to express divinity and I'm going to be a creator, I want to know that my thoughts count and I want to know that I some way made contact with this mind. So I need a sign to let me know, great mind, cosmic mind, that I've been heard by you. And I want you to bring a signal or a sign to me in my life in a way that I could least expect. And the belief that everything about your mind is completely determined by and in fact reducible to mm -hmm. what your brain does. What's become a slogan that is the mind is what the brain does. These things can be markedly influenced by the neurochemistry mm -hmm. of your brain, but, and it's a big but, um, it's also important to realize that the way you experience those feelings, the way you interface with those thoughts, mm -hmm. the kinds of attention that you pay to it, being either mindfully aware or right. having sort of an, a, a rational third-person perspective on it mm -hmm. or being just gripped by it, interfaces with what your brain is doing and how you focus your attention can change what your brain is doing. Right.
you form an image in your mind of how you want to behave, um, you can become that. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the science that we've done has shown that you change your brain in the process of doing that so that your brain actually evolves to become the image that you're portraying. So this kind of focus of attention in some significant way changes who you are, uh -huh. changes your inner chemistry. So it's powerful stuff. The fathers of quantum mechanics realized about 80 years ago that the observers could influence uh, the behavior of the microphysical system that they were measuring, uh, the subatomic particles, uh, if you will. They now recognize that uh, human consciousness can influence uh, the physical world at that level. Neuroplasticity, the capacity of neurons to form new neural pathways and to reorganize existing ones, allows the brain to evolve. Now, great inventors in history or great visionaries that had genius ideas, they had the ability to function neuroplastically. They had a, the ability to have a neuroplastic brain, which means in the brain, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. So they could learn something and begin to speculate and ask questions and begin to think about those answers. For example, Einstein. When he was 12 years old, he asked himself this question. If I ride my bicycle at the speed of light and I turn my headlights on, will they go on? Now, he thought about that question every single day of his life. The fathers of modern science were all very spiritual people like Newton, Galilei, Descartes. But after a few centuries, uh, scientists thought that we only needed mechanical explanations to understand humans and the universe. So uh, materialism became uh, a metaphysical assumption. Most scientists now are afraid to challenge. Fortunately, uh, there's an increasing number of scientists uh, who dare to challenge openly. Uh, this whole notion of materialism. Our sincere gratitude goes to the notable scientists featured today for sharing their insights on the brain, mind, and consciousness. Please join us next Monday on Science and Spirituality for part two of our program where we continue to delve into the brain's role in spirituality and affecting self-transformation. For more information on the scientists on today's program, please visit the following websites. Dr. Mario Beauregard, mappageweb.umontreal.ca forward slash Beauregard M forward slash index underscore en dot htm. Dr. Joe Dispenza, www.drjoedispenza.com. Dr. Brick Johnstone, www.telerehab.net forward slash johnston.htm Dr. Jeffrey Schwartz www.jeffreymschwartz.com Benevolent viewers, thank you for your company today on Science and Spirituality. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News here on Supreme Master Television. May we all contemplate within to discover our true, great selves. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.